All right, DeepSeek is taking over the AI race right now. And I want to talk about something that is overlooked. You know, everybody's saying, wow, DeepSeek is made for so little. It's already competing with ChatGPT, only costs six million to make. It's free, open source. But I want to talk about the thing that's most impressive to me that is really overlooked. And if you read articles about this, you may come across, they'll say, well, DeepSeek used reinforcement learning instead of reinforcement learning from human feedback and they just sound like letters and you might not really think what's the huge deal or the insight here. So in this video, I just wanna dive into this cool thing and uh, get in the weeds a little bit, but I'll make it really easy and then we can think about why it is so important. So um, if you think about reinforcement learning just on the computer, um, like for a computer to do it, you don't have any uh, humans giving feedback to an answer that a large language model could give. You're just saying, you know, if, if they did something good, the machine says, hey, you got a reward, you get a bonus point. If it does something bad, you get a punishment. Like in, in my picture here is like a dad telling their kid, you know, go to your room, you made a mistake. But you don't tell it what to do, you don't tell it how to think. You just say, if randomly the answer was good, you get a point. If randomly the answer was bad, you lose a point. And through this mechanism, incredible results can happen. So um, just quickly, so Google DeepMind, if you've ever played chess, and I play quite a bit, it doesn't matter if you know the rules or anything. The point is humans, even the best ones, are not perfect at it. And a really good machine, the best machines, can beat any human, and there's no way humans can catch up. But the cool thing is, and this is the really neat uh, thing that Google did, is they only told the computer the rules of the game. So they would say, basically, if somehow you randomly make like, no strategy, there's no thinking, just here are the rules. This is how you move the pieces. And then they played it, the game played against itself millions and billions of times in a row. And if you randomly, if it randomly made a good move and the way they calculated a good move is if it ended up winning the game, in the very end, there's like millions and billions of different options for, you know, chess moves. If somehow they won the game, it would say, hey, that must have been a good move. If you lost the game, it was a bad move. But they had to do it like probably trillions, maybe even more than that. So many games. So it's just it's almost like training someone to write a book by just randomly type like a monkey randomly typing letters. And if the story is good, you get a point. And if it's not good, you don't. And somehow you end up with the best novels ever written. Now, it wouldn't work with novels at this point, And we'll talk about why later. But that's what they did with chess. And it was such an incredible breakthrough. And then DeepSeek goes ahead and does this with math and coding, something that large language models um, were typically very bad at. And this breakthrough could get even to be even a bigger deal. So. If I just go back, this is kind of my image of uh, reinforcement through human feedback. Imagining hiring, imagine hiring millions of people to sit on their computers, read uh, answers that come back from a large language model, and they say, hey, this looks good, this looks bad, this looks good, this one looks good, oh, this one's really bad. And they judge it and then feed their response into that, and that's how the machine improves. But if you don't have these people, you have to use these uh, a computer model to say, you know, is something good or something bad. But they thought, you know, that could maybe work with chess. That was a big insight, but it's not going to work with certain problems. So imagine a simple math problem like this. Um, now, this is going to be really easy to do, but imagine training it with just the reinforcement learning from the computer. So um, Tom has five apples. His friend Jane gives him three more. How many apples does Tom ha have now? Obviously eight, not a big deal, five plus three. But imagine you don't tell the large language model how to do it, and it starts to give you random uh, answers. One of them is uh, five minus three, and it says two. And then, then the machine would say, nope, we already know the answer to this is eight. So you lose a point. That's like a go to your room scenario. Uh, if it says five times three, 15, how's that? Nope. Uh, five divided by three. Nope. And then, or whatever, you know, five plus five plus five plus three. Nope. And then finally, one of the guesses is five plus three apples. That equals eight. And then they say, oh, good, you got it, luckily. 
and then it learns something from that. So this type of question, I guess we can do five plus eight. The next one, Tom has five apples. His friend Jane took away three of the apples. How many does he have now? So that would obviously be five minus three or two. But the computer might think, okay, well, I learned how to do this. So I got five plus three again, so eight. And you'd say, no. Uh, it's like, oh, I thought I learned that from the last one. Nope. Well, this one's different. Five times three, whatever. A whole bunch of different you know, calculations. And then randomly, we'd come up with five minus three. And it said, yes. And then it slowly learns like, oh, maybe this took away three. Maybe that means I should use a minus in this case. So you do millions and trillions of these things. And it can actually randomly, if you give it the right feedback, because you already know the answer, it can learn how to solve these problems. Now, just like in the chess example, you don't really know the strategy it's doing. It's doing some odd computer strategy. You don't really know what it's thinking. It's not really thinking the same way a human is, but the result, the end up result or the end result is it is more correct than a human could be. So you tell, we know the rules of chess. We know the, we know the right answer here. So you just say, if you randomly got it, you get a point. If you don't, you lose a point. And that is so powerful. But they thought you couldn't do this with hard math questions. So these are so easy. But imagine something really, really complicated. Is the machine ever randomly just going to get it? And can you really learn that way in this deep seek? And China found like, yes, you really can. And you can do even better than the human reinforcement uh, feedback. And just like with chess, they found even the smartest chess players in the world, they actually, they cannot help a computer. Any input they give is always worse than just the computer alone. So when you get really hard math or coding problems, it can be better than asking an expert coder. You just let them randomly do it. And if you get the right answer, it learns that way. And the sky is the limit. You know, they've just done this with $6 million. You can imagine giving it more coding problems, more examples, more time to practice, and it should get even better. Um, so, and that that's what I just answered here. Like, what if the math or coding problem is very difficult? Now, um, I don't see anything stopping it at this point. Like, we're doing very, very difficult coding and math problems already. But the idea is if you keep going and you keep giving it an answer to something we already know, and then more examples around it, it's getting better and better. It doesn't seem to really matter how difficult it is as long as we're training it on things that we know the answer to. Um, but there's a couple questions that come up. One is how do you judge something subjective like a good novel or who, who is more beautiful? Like if you showed two people and you say, who's more attractive? Well, how would you give a point? Um, because that's sort of in the, there's no way to say this is definitely more beautiful, right? It, it would take humans, even though that's subjective too. It's hard to write in the rules to do that. So how do you know when to give a point or a good novel? You know, if you, if you imagine the large language model writing two novels or two uh, essays, you say, which one's better? How do you judge which one is better in order to know how to improve for the next thing? So the question is, are they going to be able to continue on with something that's more subjective? My guess is they may be able to judge around certain criteria, give partial points for things, um, and then somehow through some version of this very simple feedback loop, be able to make improvements. That's sort of my assumption there. That's what I think is going to happen, um, but we will see. And then another question is back to this math or coding problem. What if we're giving it math or coding problems that we don't know the answer to and we hope it does? It's hard to judge. Um, like you, we can't give it a problem, a, real, a hard problem that we don't know the answer to and then get it to learn how to do it because we can't judge if it's right or wrong uh, because we don't know the answer. Although sometimes if it gave the answer, maybe a mathematician could say, oh, that is the right solution. So. We'll see if there's an upper limit here or if the subjective thing matters because chess, you know, no matter how difficult it is, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, we always know if a move is good or bad based on a win or loss. So if something's a little trickier or we don't know the answer, um, this could be, you know, this is a bit of a question mark, but this whole thing of just using the reinforcement learning and having humans out of the loop 
is the big breakthrough that DeepSeek added into their model. And I think this is going to open up a whole bunch of research. Um, and it's really disrupted the market. Like even uh, NVIDIA stock right now is down 16% as I'm making this video today. And it's been on a huge rise. So, you know, who knows if we're going to need all these chips, probably will somehow, but you know, there's a lot of uncertainty out there and a lot of room to really improve with this new way of doing things, even though it's kind of an old way that Google figured out for a different set of problems. It's new in terms of the large language models. So a massive breakthrough there. We're using uh, this all the time. Now, if I could just talk about something that we're doing with our AI software, Carterio.com. You can sign up for a free account and check it out. This is a photo of me, AI generated. This is one of our influencers. You can generate these models of yourself, um, which is really cool by uploading a few photos of yourself or of something. And then you have this trained image model and you can make different models. Like I could be in a suit, I could be snowboarding, I could be doing whatever. Some people have been using it to make photos of their dogs. Like we have this one review. This is somebody's dog. You know, we gave it um, uh, like a bunch of dog photos. And then we said, hey, put it in a ski jacket and have it going skiing. So this actually looks like their dog. I mean, you can see the review here. They absolutely love it. And this is an AI dog photo of their dog in action just based on, you know, some uploaded camera photos from their phone. And then they can make the dog doing whatever they want. People love it. So you can use this for business as well. Uh, products are making a Shopify app soon. So check out Carterio.com. Uh, links in the description. And sign up for our... Um, our mailing list where you can stay on top of all this cool AI stuff, <coughs> excuse me, and our AI growth hacking course, because we're always looking how to uh, use AI to actually earn money online instead of just, you know, randomly talking about it, how to leverage it and use it in a way to earn a living more than most people are doing. So check out those things. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, subscribe, comment. We'll see you in the next one.